White base and white highlight options working with Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. In this session, we're going to take a look at some of the options that we have available to us for our white base and our white highlight printing with the all new Simple Steps Smart Rip 4.0. Be working with our Tiger graphic in this session. I'm just going to cover the options we have for these two different colors off of the halftone conversion tab. Here on page three, I have a halftone preview with an actual t shirt that I've set up behind that. Now here we'd be printing on a white t-shirt, so we wouldn't need a white base for a second white. We'd be using the white of the garment. But here again, our interlocking is really important because we can see that the interlocking halftone dots are going to be more effective at blocking out the color of the garment behind the ink and getting better vibrancy and better reproduction of the actual color working with those interlocking halftones. Now we've got a couple of different base examples set up here. Here I've got a tinted interlock. Here I've got a tinted standard. After that, I've got the white base untinted. And then finally, I've got the white base set to don't choke white. Now, here I've also got a copy of my simple step set up. This is actually set up to separate the actual tiger graphic, and here's our white base. Now, we'll start here with the don't choke white because that's a very unique option available in our white base options. If I select a white base, then those options will become available. If I go and go to a choke here, say of two pixels, I can come to my choke options for the white base, and I can select DCW. But you'll notice that if I'm on tinted, that won't be available. That'll only be available for an untinted base. And then here I can select Don't Choke White or DCW. Now what this white base does is it creates the white base, but then it also creates the white in the white base. So all the colors in the don't, don't choke white base are choked, but the white is not choked. Let's go ahead and take a look at that. Now, if you'd set this up here and run this with your separations, these are the results that you would get. Let me go ahead and select this here. There's actually two objects here because the DCW, you can see two objects here. The DCW is actually on top. And that's the blue here. And I'll go ahead and Hold down Alt here and go back to the black. I'm going to left click to knock out the background. I'm going to change that to say a different tint of blue here just so we can see this. And I'll go ahead and copy this and I'll hit Control C here. We'll go back to our halftone preview and we'll go ahead and paste this in. Now we can see here that the darker blue has a choke on it around the different colors, but where we have the lighter blue, there is no choke, and that's where the actual white is. Now we use this with the high opacity white base inks that are available when we want to just do a white base and we don't want to do a white base and a white highlight. So if we want to eliminate or reduce the number of colors we have to set up on press or if we have a colored or dark garment and we've got three colors and only one white base to work with because we're in a four color press, this is very effective for us. Now a white base is printed when we're dealing with say a medium or dark color garment. I'll change the color of this here. I'm going to select this and hold down Shift and Alt and select the color behind it and I'll go ahead and cut that. Now you can see here if we were printing just our colors on this gray garment we'd have some problems because we don't have any white here compared to working with this one's just a white as we can see here. But if it's a gray or a dark garment definitely going to need the white. But if I paste this back in and I take the one that's on top here which is my white and this is the actual white in the print that would be not choked because it's don't choke white, but you can see that the blue is still choked. Once again, those settings are right here. On your white base, untinted, choke, two pixels, choke options, don't choke white. Only available for the untinted base, and I'll explain that untinted base and tinted base in just a minute here. Now we can take this here, we'll just right click, we'll go order in front of, and we'll put this in front of the t-shirt. Then we can take the darker blue here, right click, order in front of, and we'll click on the t-shirt and we'll right click and change that to a white. We can see how that would work for our printing. Go ahead and hit Control Z there, bring those both to the front, and I'll go ahead and delete those. Now, the difference between a tinted white base and a standard white base is the fact that this is a tinted white base, and if we look at the pause of the tiger in the halftone preview, 
And I think I accidentally deleted my black there just a minute ago. Let's go back there. Yeah, I did delete that black. I want to hold down Alt there and go down until I get to that white. There we go. Now we got that deleted, and there's the black. You can see there's grayscale in here, where there's actual color. This is a tint of black. Or if it was white, it would be a shade. Now, looking at that black, if we look at our tinted base, we can see this right here. We can see that we've got the half tones in there, the tints from the different colors that are in the base. So if I go ahead and copy this and I go back to my half tone preview and paste that back in, and I go order and I go in front of and I click on the t shirt here, we'll left click, knock out the background color, we'll right click and change that to white. We can see the base there. But now, here's the problem with this we've got dot on dot here again from the flamenco. Or even if we did it as a rosette, we'd still have contamination of the garment showing through where the white would normally be. And I'll go ahead and cut that and paste that back in. You can see that here on top of the black. Here we've got dot on top of dot. But if we do an interlock on our standard base, excuse me, our tinted base right here, and I've got this interlocked to the black, I'll copy this, come in, paste this back in left click and knock out the background, right click, we'll change this to blue just to look at this and we can see how the white is interlocked with or locks in with the black. Now this is really effective for white base and, and black printing or for printing on our dark garments or our color garments because the white and the black come together to block out the t-shirt color, once again reducing color shifting and loss of vibrancy in our color because we've interlocked that with the black and once again interlocking is unique order in front of two simple steps smart red and we'll change that to a white and now we can see how well those interlock dots are work, working as opposed to the standard dots which are here and which are not interlocked. Now the difference between a tinted and an untinted base is here we've got a standard untinted white base and as you can see here on the the untinted base, you've just got solid white. Whereas with a tinted, you actually get the half tones or the shading. And you can see that here when you set up your settings, you can select between untinted and tinted in your white base option. And here's your interlocking half tones if you wanted it set up. So if I was going to print this shirt, actually what I would do is I would go with the tinted base, the interlocking half tones, and the choke against the black. Now, a lot of that depends on your level of screen printing skills and how well you're able to hold half tones and registration. If you're kind of new, you might want to just go with an untinted base and just choke that and go with don't choke white if you've only got a four color press. The best way to handle this is really do some testing with your own printing and see how things work with your process. The difference isn't that huge, but yet if you go with the tinted interlocking, you do get better ink coverage but yet you're not going to have as heavy of a hand of ink on the garment as you're going to have with the untinted. You know, when you print this untinted, you're putting down a big slab of white ink underneath all of your colors. With this method, you're not doing that, especially with the interlock. You're just interlocking your black and your white. So you're going to get a better printing result with a softer hand, a smoother hand or feel on the actual garment because you're not laying down as much ink for your white base, but yet you're still getting superior ink coverage. Let's go ahead and take a look at the difference between our standard and our enhanced white highlights or second white for our printing. And we'll find that down here in our white highlight. And once we select that, we'll have some different options here also, but there's also white highlight options up here above our separations that will also be applied to our simple vector separations. And that's selecting enhanced white. But let's go ahead and take a look at this. The basic difference between the standard and the enhanced white highlight is that the standard white highlight has just the Pantone trans white or white color in the separation. This is the same way that Corel Draw or some of the other vector applications actually separate this. But the fact is, if we look at our original graphic, we can see that where we've got gray, there would actually be white in here. This is a tint of black. Where there are tints of the orange here, there would actually be white in the tints of color for our second white or white highlight printing. 
The standard second wife does not include that. However, the enhanced white highlight does. And you can see the gray from the pause and from this screen printing squeegee in here in the handle. Now, this has also been interlocked, once again, for my second wife. I want that ink coverage. If this is an ink interlocked, I'm going to have dot on top of dot or dot next to dot. That's not what I want. I don't want contamination of the color. I want the blend between the white and the black or the tints in the white to blend very effectively. And if I go ahead and copy this and we go back to our halftone preview and we paste this in, we'll left click knock out the background. We can see that this white has the white from our tints in it. So there's a big difference between the enhanced white and the standard white using the enhanced white option here. And then we go to our white highlight and select, and scroll down here and select our interlocking half tones to get that. Of course, we can spread here, etc., with our different options for the raster type half tone under the separations tab. So we've got a lot of options and a lot of ways in which we can do very custom separations of our white bases and white highlights that are very unique to Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0. This enhanced white printing you won't find anywhere else. But it's correct printing, especially where we have tints of color concern that would actually have white in them. So concerning a color tint, the correct separation would have the white. You wouldn't print just the standard white for the correct color separation, unless you're dealing with just solid spot colors. But very often in screen printing, we're dealing with half tones and tints of color. And Simple Step Smart Rip gives us more options and more flexibility relating to our white base and white highlight printing than any other form of color separation available for spot colors in the industry and also for our half tone ripping. So go ahead and wrap here relating to our white bases and our white highlights with Simple Step Smart Rip 4.0.